Hello, my name is Pastor Joel Silverman. Thank you for watching the Regeneration Church broadcast. It's my hope that through this message, you are encouraged and made stronger in Jesus Christ and the truth of his word. Enjoy this message and may God richly bless you. So how's everybody doing? Listen, this, this message on forgiveness that the Lord has uh, given me to give is a very profound message. If you don't want your destiny thwarted or your ministry hindered, you need to forgive all people, all things at all times. You know why? Because the praise and the worship of what's inside you will come forth, bursting with joy. Do you know, I noticed a few people who cleared out their hearts this week. I'm not going to mention who they are. And when they cleared out their hearts, you had to see them worship today. It's like the most amazing thing in the world. Clean hearts worship. Amen. Stuffed hearts are stuffed. Like you eat a big meal, you get stuffed. You don't want to do nothing but go to sleep. Yeah. So let me share this with you. I gave you two sheets, and I'm going to share a, a simple uh, lesson for you. Well, first I'm going to do this. On the back of your sheet is that defective character sheet that I gave you last week. It wasn't that clear. If you don't have a sheet, please take a look at it. Um, your defects of character... Every time I live in unforgiveness, the left-hand side of this sheet operates. Everybody heard me? what I just say? When I don't forgive. Right? Okay. Now, what I didn't mention last week is why I like to hold on to my character defects. I'm going to play a little game with you. You see, there's benefits to holding on to defects. But first reason why we hold on to them is because our family taught us them. We were raised with them from little children. And we saw that they worked. We saw that uh, maybe... Uh, Suspicion work, resentment work, pride work, condemnation work. The second reason is Satan wants you to keep your defects. Why? Why do you think he wants you to keep your defects? It's a foothold. It's a foothold. Very good. We got the right answer. And if you can't love each other, and if we don't get rid of our defects, you, the people in the world can't see that Jesus has come by the what? By the love that you have for one another. So really the enemy wants you to dwell in your defects. To keep the Christian, to keep the people who don't know Christ saying, well, why should I become a Christian? They're just as like I am. What good is it? They have the same conditional love that I have. They have the same meanness, ego, pride-setting, self-centeredness that I have. Why should I come to the Lord? See, when they see a Christian, they got to see them as different. So the second reason is Satan doesn't want you to get rid of them. The third reason is defects protect us when we feel we need to defend ourselves. So if I get a little angry or look at you a little mean, you won't come near me. Do, do people know you by your attitude? Yes or no? How much of your communication is body language? 90% is body language, right? So if I just turn a little bit this way, that means get lost. How about just a look like, what do you think that says? 
I, I, I not only I don't like you, I don't think that you're valuable to me. I think I'm going to dismiss you. What are you, foolish, stupid, ignorant? What's the matter with you? You aren't the way I am? Here's the fourth reason <clears throat> why we like our defects. There's a payoff. Now I'm going to play a game with you. You ready? What is the payoff? It's like, what's my line? This is what's the payoff. Take a look at the defects. Give me a, a payoff for resentment. What's the payoff to you if you resent somebody? Like you're administrating justice? I'm administrating justice. What's the other payoff for resentment? Come on, I want you to think. Think. Yes? I'm going to let them know I'm mad, but I'm not talking out. I'm going to let them know I'm mad, but I'm not going to say anything to them. I'm right, you're wrong. I'm right, you're wrong. I, I really think that you're off. Yes, Lynn? You don't have to face your own pain. I love my resentment. Do I want to get rid of it? No. Because I'll use it when I don't want to clear my heart out. I could justify my own character. I could justify that I'm better than you. We went through this in Celebrate Recovery. Every one of these left-hand side has a payoff. That's why I hold on to them. What's the payoff of suspicion to somebody? I'm suspicious of you. I don't have to trust them. What's the other payoff? Anything else? Protect I'm going to protect myself. Reluctance. Let's go down to coarseness. What's the payoff of being coarse with somebody? Bitter. Oh, I am bitter, yes. No one will come Nobody will come near me. So when I'm tough, I protect myself. Do you realize that we had in Celebrate Recovery, everybody write the payoff of each of these character defects? You know what they were? Shocked. They said, I don't believe how I like. All right, let's try self-pity. What's the payoff for being self-pitied? Huh? Attention. I get attention. I'm the victim. And I don't have to do anything about it. Poor me. I don't have to change. Do you realize that every day, if how many people here would actually go home and write the payoff of each defect? One. Okay. One. Do you know something? That's the truth. That is the truth. Because even the people in Celebrate Recovery took three weeks to even get to it. Do you understand that defects is what cripples us? Defects stops us from soaring into the realm of the Holy Spirit with power. That's all I'm going to say. I, you know, I, I could tell you from today till tomorrow, I've been doing this for 40 some odd years, defects of character. Nobody wants to get rid of their defects. Nobody. You know Why? Because it doesn't cause them enough pain. And the ones that they love aren't suffering enough. Amen. You see, when your defect causes you enough pain, guess what? He'll say, I can't, I, I can't live with this no more. I can't handle this anger. I can't handle me being inadequate. I can't handle my intolerance. I can Remember when they always say, watch out, don't pray for patience. Yeah. Because God will send people in your life to show you how impatient you are. What? 
trials. You'll get trials if you pray for pay. Don't pray for patience. <laughs> Don't pray for the fruit of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you may actually grow up and change. <laughs> Don't pray for that. Listen, it took me 15 years of looking at my defects and i finding out how powerless I am over stopping them and how disgusted I am of myself when I operate in them and the effect on people. Then when I married Carol, who I love, then I really saw the effects of my defects come out. I said, my God, what am I doing to her? You see, if you have no love for somebody, you'll just keep using your defects. Who cares? Who cares? They deserve it. So that's what I wanted to say last week. I wanted to complete this defect of character sheet. I beg you, I beg you, just do a little fun test. What's the payoff of each of these defects for me? And you will be aghast at your own nature. And you'll go before the Lord and say, Lord, take this from me. Turn the page over. PowerPoint number seven. Oh, Lord. Lord, 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 I, I just beg you that you pierce the hearts of each individual. Do you know you could be the most gifted, talented person in the world and be defective in your character? Now, everybody remembers this, the angle line. <clears throat> I gave you the angle line. Of course, I want you to get healed. Here's the healing. Everybody knows the left-hand side. But on the top, it says when we don't resolve our anger on a daily basis, we go through the progression. Remember, fear is the root of unresolved anger. And unresolved anger is the root of unresolved unforgiveness. Everybody listening? Fear is the root of what? Unresolved anger. And anger is the root of unresolved unforgiveness. Got it? There's a, there's a process here. So, everybody knows the spemf there. And under F, I would add not only finances, I would add family to that. So you got spiritual, physical, emotional, mental, financial... And you see that on the bottom of the sheet. Now, we always said that forgiveness has to deal with internal emotional pain. We said, I said last week, you could forgive spiritually because the Holy Spirit wants to forgive. You could forgive willfully because I'll give you a gift. You forgive mentally because you make excuses for the people. Oh, they must have been tired. They must have been beaten as a child. They must have been whatever they've been been. And that's why they are the way they are to me. My wife taught me a very valuable lesson. Unacceptable behavior is unacceptable. Unacceptable attitude and tones are unacceptable. Things that are not of God are unacceptable. Isn't that good? I thought everything's acceptable. I would rationalize everything. I had excuses for everything. You can't make excuses with my wife. You just can't. There's no pretending. She calls a spade what a spade is. I call a spade a jack of clubs. <laughs> well, that's how I survived. So you got the spemf area, and the primary pain is fear, frustration, hurt, injustice, disappointment. And you know it as the first letters of each one is F-F-H-I-D. 
What is it known as? Fahid. Very simple. Now I'm going to give you a quick lesson on how to get healed real quick in three minutes. You go to the Lord and say, what spemfairy is Am I afraid of, frustrated with, hurt? There's an injustice or disappointment. Go to the Lord, ask him for healing, and he'll identify the area like that, like a laser beam. Shh. You know what happens if you don't go to the Lord? What's the next column? Anger. You can't stop this line. This line goes all day, every moment of every day, from A on the little end to Z on the big end, depending on the emotional involvement you have with that person. And if you're close to that person, it's a Z end. If you're distant for that person, you just dismiss them and go downstairs, have a bagel, and never bother with them again. And if the church is big enough, you never have to look at them again. <laughs> Not in this church. You got to, yeah, everybody's here. That's it. Now, if you don't resolve your anger on a daily basis, I believe 95% of the church lives in the third, in the next column, hostility. Hostility. Hostility is resentment. You know what resentment is? Re means what? Again. What does sentiment mean? Feel. So I'm going to resent and I'm going to re-feel every day <clears throat> the pain that somebody's caused me. And then I'll make excuses for them, I'll mentally forgive them, I'll spiritually come up for an altar call, I'll forgive them through the Holy Spirit, who always wants to forgive, I'll buy them gifts, I'll get them a cup of coffee, and the next time they do something to me, something's going to come out of my attitude. And I could say husbands and wives, do you hear what I'm saying? Anything come out of your mouth that shouldn't come out of your mouth when you don't want it to come out of your mouth? Oh, please. Sure. Then, bitterness. Now, you know why bitterness, you know, the Bible says bitterness is like wormwood. It eats out your inside. I believe it's the form of many diseases. Bitterness. It's like a wormwood that eats everything in you. If you take a look at bitterness on a definition, bitterness is having a sharp, acid, unpleasant taste, causing sharp pain to the body, discomfort to the mind, difficult and distasteful to accept, admit, and bear, proceeding from exhibiting strong anger, strong animosity. Here's what it's resulting from. Express of severe grief, losses, loss of love, loss of connection, loss of finances, loss of security, losses of future, losses of your own value. Anguish or disappointment. I wanted this person, this thing, and this place to be this, they're this, and I resent them. Everything in the middle between reality and what they are is resentment, what you want them to be. Marked by resentment or cynicism. Then I go into hate. You see, if you live with this third column long enough, you know what you become? Indifferent. You ever just become shut down? Something is so painful that you can't deal with? A situation, a spouse, a circumstance, finances. You can't deal with your own fears, your own anguish. You can't get through this. You can't even stand being around that person. And you want that person out of your life. You want that church out of your life. You want everything out of your life. Of course, I, I, I'll go into fantasy. You know what part of my fantasy was? Worshiping the Lord. 
Part of my fantasy was reading the Word. Part of my fantasy was doing everything for Christ. See, I can go into doing things and not deal with the pain that's inside me. I did it for years, guys. I, 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 I know. That's why they leave churches without excuses. I'm just out of here. I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm just, I'm just gone. Murder. Murder is the shooting of somebody, committing emotional suicide, or divorce. That's murder. Now, you know what Jesus says on Sermon on the Mount? It's been said that thou shalt not kill. But I tell you, anybody angry at his brother without a cause has already what? Committed murder. Do you know murder in our heart doesn't pray for people, doesn't support them, doesn't, doesn't bless them, doesn't, doesn't give you joy when you see them? Murder in your heart comes from unforgiveness. Oh, God, help us all. Now, remember, the closer the person to you, the more the murder. If the person don't mean anything to you, who cares? Except the Lord. Let's go to PowerPoint 9, please. What did the external causes to anger? Well, learn behavior. I learned how to do it. I watched my family get angry, and it worked. <laughs> it worked. So I'm going to get intimidated. I remember when I first married with Carol, I tried to intimidate her. Ugh. You know how far that went? Didn't go very far. She forced me to look at myself. Forced me to look at who I am. I didn't want to look at who I am. I wanted her to change. If she would only yield to me, and if I could only intimidate her by threatening abandonment of her, because I knew her fear, then she would yield to me. Uh-uh. Didn't work like a rock <laughs> made me grow up you see when you don't accept unacceptable behavior by people you grow up you challenge the person with their unacceptable behavior do you understand there's consequences for unacceptable behavior with love with love with love with the Holy Spirit with love Competition, sports, creates anger. These are external. Noise, you have a, ah, ah, ah. When a tea kettle goes off, how long could you have the tea kettle go on? Drive you nuts. Or kids screaming all the time. How about bibi wrong biblical teaching, physical illness, addictions, and overworking? All are external causes to anger. Internal causes to anger, fear, frustration, hurt, injustice, disappointment, rejection, abandonment, lack of love, and I added on low self-esteem, desire for power, desire for control, desire to be perfect, getting more money, and the, your perception of the situation. There's internal causes to anger. That's why I'm saying go to the Lord. Lord, what spam fear is getting for hit right now? Lord, what spam fear is getting for hit? Show me very clearly. Is that so difficult to say? Yeah. Why don't people do that? It hurts. I don't want to look at it. I'd rather be angry. You think by your anger you're controlling anybody? I don't think so. Let's go to PowerPoint 70. PowerPoint 70. Here's what it says. 
God's anger versus man anger. Oh, this is so good. God's anger is directed at the sin. He wants you restored. Man's anger is directed at the person. They want to get even or punish the person for how they hurt them. God's anger has perfect understanding of the whole situation. He sees everybody's motives. Man's anger sees a small, selfish perspective. It's the log in your own eye. That's man's anger. God's anger is justice and fair. Man's anger sees only one side. Romans 12, 1 and 2. For what measure you meet, it shall be measured unto you. Who are you to judge somebody else? You who judge, who do the same thing. Do you realize everybody that you judge and criticize, you're the same person? I always say, you want to take your own inventory? Write down three people you don't like. Oh, I had one guy do this. Write down three people you don't like. Write everything you don't like about them, and you're just taking your own inventory. That is really good. Nobody wants to do that. I had to do it. Because I wanted to grow up. How about I had a few people do this? Take three people who are closest to you that love you and let them tell you all about every defect you have. How's that? And then every asset you have. Why don't you do that? Why don't you get your children, get your aunts, your uncles, get everybody who loves you and say, listen, I want an anonymous sheet of every defect of character. You could also give them the defect of character sheet that I have and list it down for me, I will never say a word to you. I don't even know who did it. And then tell me all my assets. How many people would run out and do that? I know of a few. And guess the revelation they got. The honesty they got. The understanding they got. They weren't deluded like I've lived all my life. God's anger is patient and controlled. God is full of compassion, gracious, long-suffering, which is Psalm 86, and abounding in mercy and truth. And man's anger is impatient, explosive, and self-serving. And I covered James with you last week. Where do wars and fights come from? They come from the own selfish desires of your own heart. I want it this way. And if you don't change, pow, you're going to get it. But I'm a Christian. I can't literally punch you in the face or shoot you. So I'll just subtly attack you in my mind. I'll go after you, what's inside of me. I say, hi, how you doing today? You all right? Yay, that was so nice to meet you. And in my heart, I have murder in my heart. Do you think people don't read your eyes when you say hello to them? You think people don't know you immediately if you're a phony or not? Husbands and wives? Brothers and sisters? Do you, th you think you know when people are sincere and when people are not sincere? Yay and nay. Yay. yay, yay, yay. Do you know when they care for you, when they don't care for you? Amen. You can't hide your puss. <laughs> your puss reveals all things. Out of the issues of the heart, your countenances. That's why when the light is clear, when your eye is clear, when your body's clear, the whole light comes out of you. And when it's full of darkness, darkness comes out of you.
Dow 0.71. God's anger. God wants to transgress or restore. God is long-suffering. Man's anger. Man wants judgment, revenge. See the anger line, which I just went over. Now, you know, you know what it really really woke me up to this angle line is the effects on a person when they don't forgive. Do you know that is the biggest problem, the effects on you? So I wrote down some and Margaret helped me write down the rest. So Margaret and I did this some of this list. And here's what we came up with. What is the effect of unresolved forgiveness? The consequences, if we don't forgive, if we sow unforgiveness, this is what we'll reap. Spiritually. Division from the body of Christ. I have nothing to give others, no gifts, no spirit operating. I don't grieve, I, and I grieve the Holy Spirit. I don't grieve it, but I do. My prayer time is hindered. My prayers are ineffected. I stop reading the word. I receive no revelation when I read. Worship becomes commonplace, and I stand there like this. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That's some of the effects. There's probably many, many more. Next PowerPoint. What is the, uh, oh, I cause frustration in others in the body of Christ. I am out of God's will and I receive no forgiveness from God, because what measure you forgive, and it will be forgiven you. You don't forgive, it won't be forgiven you. That's got to be the most frightening thing in the world. Can you imagine God saying, I'm going to forgive you to the extent that you forgave everybody in your life. That should wake you up. How about physically? What's the effects of unforgiveness? Stress, headaches, migraines, jaw pain, back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, grinding teeth, wearing down teeth, ear pain, heart problems, muscle tension. I'm tired. I have a low immunity. So every disease that's around me, I'll get. You know, we're built to fight immunity. We're built to fight things. I go to alcohol, drugs, eating disorder, sleeping disorder, sexual dysfunction, and passade. Passade. Panic disorders. Anger. Anxiety. Social disorders. Obsessive compulsive disorders. And depression. Isn't that a wonderful list if I don't forgive? Guys, it is imperative you forgive. I wouldn't take this lesson very lightly. Emotionally, I feel rejected and reject others. I feel abandoned and abandon others. Next PowerPoint. I feel lonely and withdraw from others. I have anger, rage, resentment, bitterness, guilt, shame, depression, sadness. And I'm an emotional, as they say, basket case. How about mental? I operate in perfectionism. Mental critical. It's all or nothing thinking. I don't take my thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. I don't think of good things. I think of negative things. I project the negative future. I worry. I strive in my own thinking. I have a warring mental attitude. You don't have to fight physically. You can war in your mind. How do I get even with this one? And then you have financial. I spend to feel better about myself. I spend to get even. I overwork or work extra hours. Next PowerPoint. I'm irresponsible with my checking account. I'm irresponsible with paying bills. I buy gifts to compensate for addressing issues. I avoid, I do avoidance by going on vacation and I hoard money and become a miser, or I divide the household bank account, and I say, I'm going to have my own bank account from you, honey. Do you know the first thing that happens when you have two different bank accounts in a household? 
There's something divided in that household. There's something not right in that household. That means I don't trust you just in case you're going to get me. I'm going to have enough money to get out of here. I just hit you with a lot. But I gave you two sheets. I have so much to share with you. I'm covering Matthew 18 principle. And I just want to say this next week. Also, why can't we forgive ourselves? I had to forgive myself for every low down dog like ways that I ever did. Everything. Clean hands. Pure heart. Pure heart. We hope you enjoyed today's message. If you would like to hear more, we encourage you to visit our website at regenerationchurchny.com. So if you're ever in the area, please stop by. We'd love to have you at our Regeneration Church Sunday service or our tender-hearted message. Again, we thank you for watching, and may God richly bless you.